Hello everyone, following my last tutorial where I delved into using Nomad Sculpt on the iPad, I'm now going to use Procreate. I'm really in the iPad groove at the moment and I'm just <laughs> experimenting with different apps. And I thought I would show you how we could do a photo bash within Procreate. So I've got a series of images here and I'm just going to go through some of my layers and let's go, so we're right at the beginning here. And the first thing we need to start with is the narrative. So I want this uh, boat to be washed ashore. Fantastic. We've already got the image there. Essentially, all we need to do is to replace some of the images within the scene and create more of a narrative. So in this case, I may experiment by splitting this boat kind of in half. I might replace the sky and I'm going to replace this ground plane here. So I've split these off into multiple textures. I want to keep this just fairly simple just for this tutorial to get you up and running and I'm going to explain my entire process. So I'm using a website called Morgfile. Let's just jump over to this. Morgfile is a free to use photo download and share platform um, Yeah, where we can just download these images. So you can just click on it, click download and it will download it. You can either download or view. I usually just press view and then copy and paste it uh, if I need it. So if I want this sky, I can just hold down on the photo, press copy, go back into Procreate and then press paste. Brilliant. Right, so let's just undo that and let's have a look at our next image. So here we've got the inserted image number two. And here I'm just looking at specific details. So I might want to add these kind of little bushes here. And we've got this uh, almost like a wrap directly on top um, of the boat here. And there's some really interesting textures that I might want to copy and paste onto our previous image. Um, or I might just use this one instead of the other one. We shall see. I haven't actually uh, used these yet. So it's going to be a bit of a free form in this one. Here is my sky replacement. Again, I might need to paint into these elements. I'm just using them as my base. But there is my sky. I can always go back into morgue file and choose another one if I need to. Here, um, I'm looking at uh, the composition. So this large structure here, I might want to add within the scene. And there's some also really nice textures here that I might want to add. So I'm also thinking about the composition within the scene. Next up, we have this lovely photo. And I might use some of the textures here within my scene. And this kind of borders the scene here, which I quite like. So I might add that, but we shall see. Uh, the great thing with photos, you can just drag them on and edit into them. If you don't like it, get rid of it. You haven't spent too much time painting into this entire scene. So just uh, rely on those photos. Here I'm now looking at textures. So I might want to add these textures directly on top of this boat. We then have another image and I've done quite a few here just to get some different textures that I might want to experiment with again to apply onto the boat. Here I've got an image and I'm certainly not going to use this guy but I am going to use this texture here because this looks quite interesting. And it's nice to have some sort of foreground element here as well which is quite nice. So I may add that. We shall see. Again this is experimental so We'll see what results we get. And then this image that I just copied and pasted on. And I really like this glow here. Uh, this really nice subtle grey gradient moving down to the warmer light here. So let's begin. Uh, again, I'm fairly new to this. So <laughs> if I make any mistakes, you'll have to just bear with me as I'm just going through Procreate and trying to find these settings. I usually use Photoshop as I'm sure most of you do. But here I'm just jumping into Procreate just to see what results I can get within this app. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is let's just scale this down a little. Okay, and let's just think about where I want this within my composition. So I might make it just slightly more right leaning for now. And then I can just fill in this area here. And I'll also need to change the sky. Now I've just noticed that this image is quite dark. So I'm going to need to increase the brightness here. 
And I'm just using this little selection tool here that's like our free selection or free transform. Uh, we can do a uniform transform, a distort, or a warp, where we can actually warp this, but I definitely don't want to do that for now. If you need to undo, you can just double tap on the uh, on the iPad and we can undo that. Right, so let's look at how we can brighten this up. So I'm going to go into my layers and I'm going to click on this N icon and let's have a look. It's certainly not there. This is a brilliant start, isn't it? Here we go, adjustments, adjustments. Here we go. We're getting there, we're getting there, there we go. Right, so curves. I'm going to use a curve here and I'm just going to bring this point up. And we're going to bring this one up as well. And we're going to go into composite and then just bring all of this up. Increase the contrast a little bit. Not so much. There we go. Let's just increase the brightness here. Don't worry about the sky because I'm going to change that for later. I'm just worrying about this boat here. I need it to be just a little bit brighter. I can always paint into it later. But that's looking pretty cool. Uh, it's interesting. It's a slightly different result to Photoshop. So um, again, you'll have to bear with me. Right, let's have a look at the next photo. So let's try and choose a cool little base plate here. And I might need to just duplicate this just in case. So let me see, duplicate, where are we? Do, 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 do. I'm gonna copy this and then paste this again, just in case I might need to make some sort of changes there. I'm just gonna drag this one directly underneath and I'm gonna scale this one up just a little like so. Let's move that to about there. And then I'm going to go back into this image and I'm going to use the eraser. Let's see what this is set to. Let's set this to maybe a soft brush and just start to erase this. I'm going to use a different texture later. For now, I just want to fill in this scene just so I've got something in the background. Like so. And let's replace that sky. Now there's multiple ways we could do this. I suppose the easiest way would be to just use that eraser and just start to erase this. There is a magic wand tool uh, where we can make our selection. So if I select this as automatic, uh, where are we here? Automatic freehand. And I could do a freehand selection, uh, but it doesn't work as well. I kind of like to just use the eraser, to be honest, and just erase this entire section. It's going to be much easier. So let's just erase all of that for now. Let's just hide this image underneath. And let's zoom in and just erase this. This is usually where you skip the video. You don't want to see me having to erase each individual piece. But if you do, then all I'm essentially doing now is just erasing all the way up to the point of that image. And that, then I'm going to add that sky in the background. Now, when I add the sky, it's also going to change the lighting, or at least I'm going to have to change the lighting on this boat. So I'm going to have to make it a little bit warmer because that light is subdued and dull in the background. I'm going to also have to make this boat perhaps even a little bit darker. Now that I've lightened it up, I might need to make it a little bit lighter and it's going to have a warmer hue. So as I'm editing this, I'm already thinking, right, what's the next stage? Whilst you can kind of just turn your brain off at this stage, this doesn't take too much brain power just to erase this. This is kind of like the therapeutic mode where you don't have to really think about what you're doing. You can just think about what next stages you're going to take. It's also good to know that when you're editing this and when you're using something like an image that you need to erase the background, there are multiple ways of doing it. But if it's this way and it's the slow way, make sure that this is the technique that you want to use, or at least this is the photo that you want to use. Because 
once you've done this and then you put the image in the background and you realize ah, actually the image that was behind it was was okay i didn't need to do that you've kind of just wasted time and in the industry time is money so try not to do that make sure you're committed at this stage that you don't want this background all right let's just edit it up to here just in case and let's cut around this and before I do the uh, inside sections here I might be able to use the magic wand there I'm just going to add that image in the background so let's just drag this just hold and drag underneath this one and let's see what that's looking like that's looking pretty cool to me now I might just stretch this up slightly and let's see what that looks like okay and I'm just going to try and match the same horizon line which is round about there and I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to go back into this image and I'm going to erase this again so let's just uh, let's try this let's try this automatic and see if this works that seems to be doing a pretty good job uh, let's select here is this going to work kinda 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 there we go and then let's use the eraser make it nice and big and then just erase these sections there we go that saved time let's do the same here again automatic let's just select these sections I might need to do that manually uh, yeah I'll erase that one as well yeah, I'm quite impressed with that right let's just go back into this and just erase these sections whoo that's a little bit too big And you may be thinking, why are all my settings on the right? That is because I am left-handed. As I've said in previous videos, I know I'm one of those weird ones. I'm that guy who's left-handed. Right, so let's just delete this. And the light now is far too bright in the background. So let's just erase all of this. We don't need this now let's just get rid of that but I'm gonna keep these little rock sections here Now I'm doing this quite quickly, but by all means, take your time with this. Spend all day on it. I'm going to try and do this as quick as possible, just so I don't bore you with an extremely long video. But yeah, definitely take your time on this. If it's just for a concept and you need to very quickly put something together, then sure you don't need to be so precise because it's just a concept it's just a general idea of what the scene could look like in the film or the game but if this is for your own enjoyment then like i said by all means take your time or even a portfolio piece and you want it to look badass then go for it take a long time on this right I've got these sections here. I'm going to have to erase them, but I think it's going to be a little bit easier with this magic wand tool. And again, I'm kind of impressed here. It's doing a pretty good job at erasing that. That's all. Whoa, okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> that works better than expected. It's crazy what you can do on an iPad now. I remember when my friend first had an iPad, it was one of those really early ones. And the uh, the pencil was one of those kind of rubber tips, 
and yeah, I remember using it thinking, it's okay, I can kind of see what you could do with it, but now you've got apps like this, it's just insane. You can actually create industry-ready stuff with this app, it's pretty awesome. Right, let's just erase this section here. And I need to extend that out, right? Let's go back to our image. Let's go back to this one. And I'm just going to drag this one and put this on top if I can. And there we go. Let's turn that back on. And then let's just erase all of this. With these large areas, I tend to just use my fingers instead because when you're rubbing out a lot with this pencil, it can erase the, or not erase, but it it slowly dulls the edge of your, your pencil. So I just use my finger instead. I've got one of those paper feel protectors on my iPad, so it does wear it down quite quickly. Right, let's have a look at that. Let's just turn this on and off. It's always good to just turn your layers on and off to see what that, that's doing. It's looking okay, it's not the best, but let's continue from here. I'm going to use some of my other images in this foreground section. And I might even just go into the crop here of the canvas and just crop and resize this and just bring this in a little bit. There we go, make it more of like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That's looking a little bit more cinematic, okay. So we need to go back into this image and we need to change some of these colors here. So I'm going to go into the adjustments and I'm going to select the color balance. And let's move this a little bit more towards red and a little bit more towards yellow. Maybe just a little bit more red and possibly a little bit more green as well. So that's the shadows. Let's go into midtones. Okay, a little bit more magenta. Just a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow. That's looking pretty good. And highlights. We can make these highlights just a little bit cooler instead. That looks pretty good. So let's preview that before and after. That's looking a lot better. Right. So let's move on to our next image. Let's have a look at... Let's look at this sand here. Let's just turn this one on. And I'm going to turn or at least move this layer back down here. And for now, let's just very quickly erase this. So what I like to do is I like to just select the image and turn the opacity down just so I can see what it's like underneath here. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to use the eraser again. And I'm just going to erase all the sections that I want to keep. There we go. So I want to keep all this section down here. So now I can go back into that image, turn the opacity back up. And then again, I'm just going to use my finger and just erase all of this. Whoa, not that big. Right, not too bad. So let's go on to a new layer and let's just create a new layer or a blank layer directly on top. And let's just select a darker color. So I'm just gonna hold my finger over this color here, make it just a little bit more desaturated. And I'm just gonna paint directly on top of this. Let's use a, um, let's have a look. We've got paintbrush airbrush let's just test a soft airbrush 
Let's just see if we can make some sections a little bit darker. I'm going to set this, just press that N icon, I'm going to set this to a multiply and I'm just going to turn the opacity down. Okay, so I just want to create little pockets of light. So I'm going to have a light. Uh, let's just turn this. I can't actually show you. <laughs> there's a light here, uh, and there's going to be a light here. Okay. Uh, so anything in between there is going to be just a little bit darker. So I've just used that multiply with a darker brush just to make it a little bit darker. Okay, I can always paint into this later. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go on to our next image now. Let's have a look at this one. Now, can I actually use this? Again, I'm just going to go back into that N and I'm going to use the opacity and just bring that down. Okay, and let's see what results we get. Right, so let's try and just shrink this down a little. And let's see what this looks like. So I might just copy and paste this. So let's just select our image and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste this. And I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I'm sure there's a, a duplicate option here. Uh, but for now, I'm just uh, doing it this way. I'm going to flip this horizontal so I've got the same image on the other side, like so. And let's just hide that for now. And on this image, I'm going to turn the opacity back up. So do I want that effect? It looks quite nice if I turn the opacity down. So I might save that. And it might be quite cool to have this sand kind of coming up on this boat here. So let's use a, let's have a look at some ink. Or let's go back to this brush. Here we go. Right, so I've just turned that back up, but I'm going to need to just change some of the color balance again. So let's look at the midtones and just make this a little bit warmer. So more towards red, more towards yellow. Let's look at the shadows and maybe let's make that again a little bit warmer. And the highlights, we could just make it just a little bit cooler, okay? Just to contrast the warmth of our midtones. And let's just erase some of the section here. Okay, not too bad so far. So let's have a look. Let's go back into this image. And let's just drag this one out. Let's move this here. Let's do the same thing again. Let's just drop the opacity. Just see what that looks like. Do we need it? I might add it. Again, this is the great thing about adding photos. If you don't like it, just erase it. Just get rid of it. Throw it away. If you're drawing this, you've got to be a little bit more committed because it takes longer. And ultimately, that's why you use these photographs because there's an awful lot of design already there within the photo. You're just using that to your advantage and it's going to speed up the whole process.
Okay, that looks okay. Let's just go back into our adjustments and let's do another color balance, a little bit warmer. Uh, sorry, I'm set to highlights right now. Let's go to midtones. That looks okay. Right, so let's now look at this image here. So let's try something else. Let's go into the multiply and let's just go through this. Um, darken. Let's see what that's doing. See, that's quite interesting. Right, so I'm just testing this. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. Uh, let's just erase this bit here. In fact, let's just erase all of that. Yeah, I mean, that kind of works. Let's just go back into that and just turn that back to normal. So now we've got all of the details from that image. And let's just go back into the eraser and let's go back to that airbrush and maybe just soften this up a little bit. Just soften these edges. just so that we add a slight kind of hue in the background. Now we could go back into that image and let's maybe go into a curve and just bring this down slightly because it's going to be a bit more of a silhouette, like so. And let's also go into the color balance and maybe just make this just a little bit cooler in the background. Right, let's go back into that eraser and just erase that section. So let's go back up to here. Now I am using the Raisin Premium brushes, but to be fair, this brush is also in things like the uh, Nico brush. So you can use, you know, stuff like this instead, the Roll brush. Just the same thing. It's just this one slightly changed. Ultimately, you got to kind of try and find the brushes that you like. I've also changed the settings of the pen pressure because I felt like even when I was touching extremely lightly, it was very hard. Um, there wasn't too much of a pen pressure change. So I've just gone into the settings and preferences, I believe, where is it? Edit uh, pressure curve here. And I've got my curve set to this. Or well, has that changed? That might have changed slightly. Yes, yes, that is my pressure. Because I think by default, it's somewhere up here and it's somewhere down here, and then this is somewhere up here. So yeah, that's where I've got mine set. 
just a little bit better. If you want to keep it the same, then you can do that. Um, there's a strange kind of glow here that I don't like, which I might just paint out later. For now, we'll keep that the same. Let's just see where this bit is. Right, there we go. Let's set this to something like a hard edge, like that. And let's erase this. And you press from one point to the other. If you hold it, then you can actually create these lines, which is really cool. I wish Photoshop had something like that. That is pretty good. Right, let's just turn that opacity all the way back up. Let's see that. That's okay. We could always clean that up. Spend a little bit more time on it. For now, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. That's all right. Excellent. So let's go back into uh, this layer and let's just do a new layer on top. Let's select our brush. We've got soft brush selected and let's just select this color here and I might just make it a little bit brighter, a little bit more desaturated as well. And then let's just paint this mist in the background. Okay, I might just turn it down just a little bit. And then let's try a freehand lasso and let's lasso around this section here like so and let's go back into our brush make this a little bit brighter and let's just paint that just so that we've got a little bit of a separation here between both of these mountains so that's looking quite cool let's go into the arrays and just erase a little bit there back into airbrush Let's make a slight change. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it's coming along. Let's have a look at our next image. So this one is our texture. So let's see what this looks like. Let's maybe just flip this around, move this here. And let's do a uniform. So let's try and or distort. That's a little bit better. There we go. Look at that. Fantastic. So that's like the the skew within Photoshop and I hate to constantly compare this to Photoshop but it is what I usually use um, but this is absolutely fantastic just for for an iPad app it's just insane right not to diminish iPads or or tablets but I don't know this is pretty cool when I was a kid, I'd never dreamed that I'd be able to have something so small and be able to do all this. It's pretty cool. Right, let's look at lighten, contrast. Uh, I usually just flick through these and see which one works best. And it looks like light and color is doing a pretty good job. So let's have a look at that. Let's move this around, see where we can place this. I think it looks pretty good round about here. So I'm going to use that. And we can always go into our curves and just play around with this just so we can get rid of some of that darkened area, increase some of the lights, and go back into the eraser and just erase this. So this is actually my very first photo bash <laughs> within Procreate, so I'm having a blast with this. I'm definitely going to use this more often. Right, so there's that one. Let's have a look at this one here. Let's just do the same effect again. Let's go through this and see what effect we can come up with.
So I've just gone back into that curve. Now I'm going to use the eraser and just erase a bit of this. Right, I've actually erased quite a bit of that image. I'm not sure whether I liked it or not. So let's just keep that the way it is. And let's have a look at this one. Let's just shrink this down a bit. Let's turn that back to free form. Let's have a look at it. It's maybe around about here. Let's do the same thing again. Back onto the layer, press N. Uh, let's go back to lighten. That's pretty good. Let's go back to curves and drop this down. Make it a little bit darker. Remove the dark sections of that image. Let's again just move this in place. And erase what we don't want. So that image was predominantly blue. So I'm just going to go back into our color balance and just make this a little bit warmer. So here I just thought I could have a cross between those two skies just to make it a little bit moodier, which I think that's done a pretty good job there before and after. That's quite good. Let's have a look. Now, do we need to add anything else onto it? Let's just do a new paint layer here. And let's go back to my brush. There we go. And let's see if I can just start loosely painting into this.
gonna make this section just a little bit darker here. It's kind of bright. And again, I'll take your time with this process. I'm just doing this very quickly just to get this one wrapped up. You can start to add kind of a rust effect here. So now I'm just adding just a little bit of a warmer highlight here. And that should just about do it. Now let's have a look at, let's just collapse all of these together. Or actually first, let's have a look at this layer. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this one again. So I'm gonna click on here, I'm gonna copy, and I'm going to uh, paste. And I'm gonna add this on top. Right, so I just wanted to see if there was anything that I wanted to keep there. I don't think I really need it. It looks okay here, and I might just keep it there. But I would say everything else is looking okay. Right, apart from that, I'm going to call this one complete. And yeah. I actually think this is pretty good for, for Photobash and painting. I know quite a lot of people who have uh, Photobash with this, but for me this is the first time doing it away from Photoshop, and I think I've just proven to myself that it can be done. So I might do some more of these. So if you enjoyed this, just let me know, and maybe I'll make some more Photobash or Procreate 
videos of me painting and maybe do some time lapses. I usually like to just keep these kind of fairly long where I actually explain the process live as opposed to a sped up video, you know those I drew this in 10 minutes but it's a time lapse so you probably drew it in an hour, you know, or half an hour. I like to show you the entire process and explain you know how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, etc. So if you like this then just let me know and I can do some more of it. Excellent, I will leave it there for now. Let's just zoom out so we can see the entire thing. There we go. And oh, we've got to end. We've got to end with birds, of course we do. <laughs> the classic bird. Let's go back to inking and let's just draw these in. And there we go. Perfect. Right, excellent. Take care for now and I will see you in the next video.